Welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas, and we're two Swedes, and we love design. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the modern design auctions recently held at the two largest Swedish auction houses, Bukowski's and Stockholm's Auktionsverk. Mm. Both these companies have their ordinary online auctions all year round, but a few times a year, they have these quality auctions that are supposed to contain nothing but exclusive high-end products. Okay. There's a lot of art sold at these auctions, but we will, as usual, focus mm. on furniture and lamps. Yeah, and first, let's take a look at Stockholms Aktionsverk and their uh, modern and contemporary auction featuring uh, 127 lots of furniture and 54 lots of lamps. And this auction uh, positively stands out. An obvious improvement from recent years when their design auctions were very underwhelming compared to competitors. Um, the collection included several pieces by the Austrian-Swedish architect Josef Frank, a uh, recurring uh, presence in uh, these auctions, mm -hmm, of course. Mm -hmm. Overall, it's a blend of Danish and Swedish modernist designs, complemented by a few pieces from Norway and the United States. And now let's check out uh, four furniture pieces and two lamps from this auction. Yeah. First out is the sofa GE236, designed by Hans Wegner in 1954 for the manufacturer mm. Getama. This is hardly a rare mm. sofa, but the upholstery is remarkable. <laughs> Some people might think that it looks a bit strange, but it's actually an original mm. upholstery by Unika Väv, sometimes used for these sofas in the mid-50s. It was sold for just over 1300 US dollars, well below the estimate. Yeah. I think it's fun looking. Yeah. Uh, I like the red and black. Yeah, and it's it's refreshing to see one of these design classics with a real mid-century mm. upholstery. I think so too. Not just white and grey. No, no, I love um, this. Yeah, it's really nice. And um, I posted this one on, uh, on our Instagram account mm -hmm. uh, a couple of days ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of our followers uh, sent a picture of uh, two uh, easy shares he had oh, with the same the upholstery. Same. Oh. But I think some blue upholstery instead. Oh, but okay. it's still the same, and it's it seems like if quite a few of Wagner's pieces were upholstered in this okay. uh, striking uh, textile. I like it. Yeah. So if if you want to buy a Wagner piece, you should really buy one with this uh, this upholstery. Yeah. You should. yeah. And next is this somewhat unusual looking armchair designed by Arnold Madsen for the manufacturer Madsen and Chubel. And the story behind this chair is really confusing and the nickname the Oda chair is uh, nothing but stupid actually. Um, the chair was originally uh, attributed to the architect in a book written by the Japanese design historian and collector Norisugo Oda. Uh, but this uh, turned out to be very wrong. <laughs> Instead, the designer turned out to be Arnold Madsen, the man behind uh, the famous clamshare, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, but ironically, the nickname Oda Share is still used um, as a reminder, I guess, of this false uh, attribution. Weird. Um, and this share was sold for uh, 1700 US dollars, and that was a bit below the estimate. Yeah, the upholstery is repulsive. Yeah, it's horrible, and it must have been reupholstered sometime, mm. because this is like some 1980s uh, mm. upholstery. Looks like from a children's bedroom. I yeah, think. yeah. I don't like it. But... I don't like the chair. Okay, what's either. your... Uh... No, I think it's ugly. Yeah. It's it's a bit strange looking. Yeah. Uh, it's like the, the armrests are placed it, inside the chair mm -hmm. instead of uh, outside oh, it. Mm. Uh, but it's no, like. no, it's uh, it's a rare chair. But no, it's not one of our favorites. Several chairs by Ib Kofod Larsen mm. were sold at the auction, and uh, my favorite is the Åre easy chair produced mm. by the Swedish company Ope Möbler. It's made from a beautiful combination of teak, cane, and leather, and was sold for almost 6,000 US dollars, mm. which was three times the estimate. Yeah. That is 
much money for one easy chair. Yeah, it's a lot of <laughs> but money. But it is beautiful, it really is. Yeah, it's one of the best chairs by ah. OP Möbler, absolutely. Of course it is. Uh, it's, um, and I love this original leather upholstery really on the pretty. seat, uh, mm. that they really kept it, yeah. even though it's uh, kind of uh, worn. Yeah. Um, and look at the cane in the back of the of the. Uh, on the backrest yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's a beautiful big. detail this mm -hmm. uh, that's it's a space between yeah. the lower and upper part and that's actually a, a reason and why it's like there. bend at the bottom yeah yeah it's really beautiful and it's sloping backwards yeah, really so you're really sloping. resting mm -hmm. when you're sitting in it yeah don't have anything bad to say no about i would it. love one <laughs> mm -hmm. And the last furniture we've chosen is this beautiful cabinet by Otto Schulz, uh, produced for Boet in 1939. And the exterior is covered in red artificial leather decorated with rivets uh, forming the zodiac signs. And it was sold for amazing $63,000 and it was twice the estimate. Mm. Well, zodiac is on trend. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> And uh, Schulz is on trend too. Yeah. Um, and it's, of course, a beautiful cabinet. But if it hadn't been for this uh, pattern outside, it, it would have been, been really boring. Yeah. And I'm not really sure what it's used for. It's just a lot of mm, drawers inside. Like papers. Papers. Yeah, it, I guess it is uh, like a document cabinet. Yeah, so for files. And yeah, yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Which we don't have. No. And now to the two lamps we've chosen. First out is this sculptural Swedish table lamp. Mm. Wow, that's that's a lot of numbers. Yeah. Uh, one five five eight two. Yeah. <laughs> by Harald Notini for Arvid Bölmark's Lampfabrik. Yeah. It was produced in the early 1950s and features an organic brass shade resting on a pillar twined in leather. Yeah. It's, it was sold for six thousand two hundred which was almost exactly the estimate. Yeah. That's good. And this is this is a fun lamp, of course. Yes. And, and the reason why it's expensive is just because it's extremely rare, mm -hmm. obviously. There are just a few around. Yeah. It's uh, beautiful. But, uh, yeah, and uh, it's uh, I would love one, of course, but uh, I wouldn't pay no. 6000 for it. No, no, no. I no, don't no, think no. it's worth it. No. But, uh, but it's uh, still a, table lamp. a really nice lamp. It's super pretty. Yeah, yeah. And the second lamp is this unidentified Finnish chandelier. And how do you know it's Finnish? Um, they said it was, uh, but um, it looks... Know? I don't think it's Swedish, at least, because I've never seen anything really like it. Well, it was attributed to the manufacturer Valinte Oy, and it looks like some of their lamps, but I'm not sure. Mm -mm. I, I, I have no idea, but... The most striking feature is obviously the dome-shaped reflectors above each uh, shade. And it was sold for $1,000, which was a bit below the estimate. Uh, and it's obviously a fun lamp, but it's also a bit... I mean, where should you have it? Is it really so fun? I mean, quite fun with these reflectors and... Uh... I don't get a fun feeling. Okay, you don't uh, really no. like this one. I do like the thing at the top, what it's called. Yeah, the canopy, perhaps. Canopy. Or, yeah, I think they call it canopy uh, up in that, the that's, scene. That's very cute. But yeah, and <laughs> it's, uh, I think it's something used in a theater or uh, in a cinema or something. You don't have that at home. No, you don't. The cinema only have spotlights. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. I don't know, but um, I don't feel much. Okay, I, I, I kind of like it. Okay. Now turning our attention to the Modern Art mm. Plus Design Auction, yeah. organized by Bukowski's, featuring 116 furniture lots and 38 lamp lots. Mm. Compared to Stockholm Saktionsverk, the overall quality is slightly better, mm. with a more intriguing array of pieces. Axel and Ajort pinewood pieces are dominating, mm. but we will simply ignore them <laughs> yeah. as they are not our favorites. Notably, there is a splendid assortment of lamps crafted by Nursa Kompaniet, so let's look at the four furniture pieces and two lamps from this auction. Yeah. And first is this Flora chest of drawers, uh, designed by Josef Frank for Firma Svensk 10 in the 1930s or early 40s. 
And as with all these flora pieces, the exterior is covered in the floral prints Nordens Flora, showcasing different flowers found in the Nordic countries. And it was sold for $86,000, about twice the estimate. But is that really made in the 30s and 40s? Or has someone just... Now, this one I think is, is original, actually. But it's it's a common practice uh, mm -hmm. in auction to uh, like buy this Nordens Flora. It's, it's a book. Mm -hmm. And then you just cut out these, uh, these pieces and then glue mm -hmm. it to mm -hmm. <laughs> some other piece of furniture. Yeah, but yeah. this one I think is original. But you and can the, make it look gold. Yeah, you can. And get 86,000. Uh, and the reason is, I think, uh, the, why this one was sold uh, for quite a lot of money mm -hmm. compared to some other similar pieces is that the patina on this one is, is quite good. Yeah, and you can make it look that way. Yeah, you can. Uh, but if we suppose this one is, <laughs> is original. But yeah. I don't like it. No. It's, seen it before. Yeah, seen it several times before. But the feet are cute. The feet are cute. Little balls. <laughs> yeah. Ball feet. Yeah. Now we have this Sebrano sideboard designed by Greta Magnusson Grossman in the 30s for her own company studio in Stockholm. Mm. One corner is rounded with revolving shelves inside, and this rare piece was sold for just over 7,500 US dollars, which was well above mm. the estimate. Yeah, and I like this one. Uh, I think uh, it's it's kind of... Uh, the, it's minimalistic in mm -hmm. a way, yeah. but you know, the wood is spectacular yeah, the of wood course is the main point of course yeah and then it's made to be placed uh, in like in a corner and then it's going out uh, and then you have this revolving uh, piece yeah. um, out there but i would rather have two of those yeah you like this symmetrical yeah. pieces instead yes, yeah i do not like it <laughs> <laughs> now it makes me crazy yeah but otherwise, it's a, it's a fun feature here and you can place... But I'm not really sure what to place on them, but... Very small things. <laughs> small things, like a cutlery or something, maybe, <laughs> perhaps. Maybe. Yeah, but it's it's a rare piece and... Yeah, uh, yeah of course, yeah, it's beautiful. It's, yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And we must also mention this strict sofa designed in the 1950s by Svante Skog for AB Hjärtqvist in Nässjö. It's, it's like uh, almost exactly where we live. <laughs> yep. um, it has uh, loose cushions upholstered in an off-white fabric. Is that old? Uh, no, I think it? it's reupholstered. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a frame made of oak and then these leather straps as armrests. And it was sold for $4,000 and it was spot on the estimate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this one is not typically Swedish, I think. No. Uh, it's almost Brazilian. It's um, Brazilian furniture often had this kind mm. of uh, armrests. And, uh, I think it looks super uncomfortable. Yeah, I think it is. Which I don't like. No. When it's a sofa. And it's, but it looks good. Yeah, it looks really good. But you need to have this one in the middle of the room. Yeah. Or you, you need to see the backrest. But that's mm -hmm. the, the nice feature. But does these few leather straps really stay there when you sit? No, you, or does it just break? Yeah, it stays there, but it's not really a support for the arms. And a friend of ours... I mean in the back. Yeah, you mean there? Yeah, they do. They do. Very sparsely... Uh, yeah, but but the, they, uh, the, the cushions are quite hard, mm -hmm. so they will stay in place. Mm -hmm. A friend of ours, uh, Andreas Garage, uh, he had one of these, but mm. that, that was before it was uh, identified. So he oh. sold it as like an oh. identi uh, unidentified <laughs> piece. Yeah, but it's, uh, and it was just as uncomfortable as <laughs> it looks, <laughs> but it's uh, still still a nice looking piece. It is, it is. And the last piece of furniture we're going to mm. take a look at is this Paradiset cabinet mm. designed by Otto Schulz and produced by Boet in 1952. Yeah. The exterior is covered in artificial leather mm. with rivets forming the pattern P Paradise. Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. <laughs> yeah. It's very religious. Yeah, very. Composed by the artist Gunnar Erik Ström. Oh, yeah. It was sold for almost three times the estimate, 35 thousand dollars yeah that's a lot of money i do not like the religious uh, thingy uh, I, no i do uh, like the zodiac more yeah and it's also interesting to note that the, there's a lot of fake uh, paradise cabinets around 
Uh, the auction house uh, right sold a fake cabinet recently and uh, there are some dealers uh, just creating this pattern ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it's uh, it's it's uh, interest uh, it's important to understand that this is a copyrighted pattern yeah. of course it's an artist who made it so it, they are illegal but they are still around so you should really watch out if you're interested mm-hmm. in buying one one of these it's filled with animals, though. Yeah, I don't see Adam or Eve or the or the tree or whatever serpent and stuff. No, I, ju- I don't see a lot really. Of animals, so yeah, it's kind of cute. Yeah, it's a, it's a giraffe and uh, some <laughs> other animals. I don't really understand. Yeah. They yeah. said it was this pattern, well, but I'm I, not I, really I convinced know. now. I think it's a zoo. Yeah, it is, or some African uh, theme there. The savanna. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. First out is this monumental wall lamp designed by Bertil Brisborg and Olle Elmgren in 1951. And it was custom made by Nordiska kompaniet for the Cinema Forellen in Luleå. And the size is yeah, it's really huge, almost 4 meters wide and 2 meters tall. Hmm. It was sold just above the estimate $23,000. Mm-hmm. And this is, of course, really nice. Uh, it's a fun lamp. Yeah, of course it's fun. Uh, I do it's, I do think it's a bit underwhelming in the picture, but I do not think it is that in real life. Uh, no, no, uh, exactly. Uh, we will show you. Uh, we are seeing one picture just from uh, straight on on the lamp here, but you will see a lot of different uh, pictures mm-hmm. of it. You're showing me some uglier pictures. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, but it, it's... it's uh, Obviously also a difficult lamp to place somewhere because it's four meters yeah. uh, tall. So you, you need to have it in uh, like some, it's, it's covering a whole wall. Yeah, it's, but it's, it's nice. Great. Yeah, yeah, of it's course. Great thing to yeah. do. Yeah. And finally, we have the floor lamp E1781 produced mm. by ASEA in the 50s. It's really good looking, but the reason mm. why we chose to include this lamp in this video is frankly the hammer price. Yeah. It was sold for 7,600 US dollars, almost eight mm. times the estimate and probably somewhat of a record for a mid-century ASEA lamp. Yeah, and it is good looking, I think. Uh, it's fun with this uh, combination of these yeah, of organic yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, shades. Um, and I've never seen uh, this lamp before, and it mm. must be extremely rare. Um, and I would say that ASEA lamps are... Uh, the price is uh, rising now uh, on auction and, mm-hmm. uh, and like at yeah. dealers. So. I do think it's too simple for that price. Yeah, and I, I was surprised actually for this um, huge um, huge sum of money. Mm. Yeah. So... Mm. I yeah, but remember that, that, and if you find an ASEA <laughs> lamp, buy it, because yeah. uh, they will uh, just keep on rising now. Sell it, sell it expensive. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this was some of the design items recently sold by Bukowskis and Stockholm Sakonsverk. And what did you think about them? Uh, do you have a favorite? And please let us know in the comments below. Yeah, and thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Thank you.